Hey guys, there's another one of these clocks. Let's do it. So the first expression is sine of pi over two. So if we have a right triangle and we name one of the angles theta, the side opposite the theta we'll call opposite and the side opposite the right angle we'll call hypotenuse. The sine of that angle theta is equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So this is what sine means. And now let's deal with this pi over two. Let's look at a circle. The circumference of a circle is two pi r, where r is the radius. So ultimately that means that if we start here at zero to go all the way around the circle, it would take two pi of those radiuses to go all the way around. Or in other words, two pi radians. So let's say we only wanted to go half of the circle. Well, that would be half of this, which would be pi radians. And if we decide to go half of half of a circle, that's gonna be pi over two radians. So now let's clean things up a little bit. And if we extend these, we can see that this forms a right angle. So pi over two radians is the same thing as a right angle. So let's label this right angle in this right triangle as pi over two. And now we're ready to take the sine of pi over two. So this will be equal to a ratio. And on top, we have the opposite. Well, the opposite of this pi over two is the hypotenuse. And then on bottom, we have the hypotenuse. And the ratio of the hypotenuse over the hypotenuse will be equal to one. So this is why sine of pi over two is equal to one. And that's why it's in that location. So next we have ddx of 2x. Ultimately, this means what is the slope of f of x equals 2x? 2x is linear, so we can use y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. But we can see here that the 2x is the same thing as mx, so in other words, m is equal to 2. That means the slope of 2x is equal to 2, and that's why this is at the 2 o'clock hour. Next, we have the determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix. There's a whole lot to determinants, but finding it is not very difficult. All we do is multiply the two numbers on this diagonal and then subtract the product of these two numbers. Well, that gives us 10 minus 7, which is equal to 3. And that's why this is at the 3 o'clock hour. Next, we have this giant pi from n equals 1 to 3 of n plus 1 over n. So this means we plug in 1 for the n's, then we plug in 2 for the n's, and then we plug in 3 for the n's. And we stop because we got to this 3 up here. Since it's a giant pi, that means it's going to be the product, so we're going to multiply all of these. So on top, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4, and we don't need these parentheses on bottom. And then we can just multiply straight across. 2 times 3 times 4 is 24. 1 times 2 times 3 is 6. 24 divided by 6 is 4. And that's why this is at the 4 o'clock hour. And now we got this double square root we get to evaluate. Let's copy it down. 7 squared is equal to 49. 24 squared is equal to 576. 49 plus 576 is equal to 625. The square root of 625 is 25, and the square root of 25 is 5. And that's why this is at the 5 o'clock hour. Next, we have 3 factorial. Well, 3 factorial means 3 times 2 times 1, and 3 times 2 times 1 is equal to 6. And that's why this is at the 6 o'clock hour. Next, we have 1 fourth times this funny looking thing. It's not a fraction because there's no fraction bar here, or vinculum is the name for that line in a fraction. There is none of those here. This is a combination. Here's the notes for combinations. It says n choose r is equal to n factorial over r factorial n minus r factorial. So to evaluate 8 choose 2, we plug in 8 for the n's and 2 for the r's. And now we can clean this up. 8 minus 2 is equal to 6. This 8 factorial means 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times all the way down to 1. But we can rewrite it as 8 times 7 times 6 factorial because this 6 will then go all the way down to 1. So this 6 factorial and this 6 factorial can cancel each other out. And then 2 factorial is just 2 times 1, so that's just 2. 8 over 2 can be 4 over 1. And then 4 times 7 is equal to 28. Ultimately, this thing is going to be 1 fourth times 28. And that is equal to 7. So this is at the 7 o'clock hour. Next, we have 2 times 2 squared. Let's bring down the 2. And then 2 squared is equal to 4. 2 times 4 is equal to 8. So this is at the 8 o'clock hour. Then we have an integral from 0 to 3 of x squared dx. Here are the notes for this type of integral. So we can just use the notes to evaluate this. So we know we're gonna have some sort of fraction and this says x to the c plus one. Well, c is two, so this is gonna be x to the two plus one. And c plus one would end up being two plus one. And then for this, we can see that the b is this top number, so we're gonna put a three there and the a is gonna be zero. Now we can clean this up. Both of these two plus ones are equal to three. So to evaluate this thing, we copy down the x cubed over three and we plug in this top number for x. And then we're gonna subtract what we get when we bring this down again and plug in the bottom number. So after we clean this up, this will be the answer to this. Three cubed is equal to 27. 27 divided by three is nine. Zero cubed is equal to zero and zero divided by three is zero. So this whole thing is equal to nine and that's why it's at the nine o'clock hour. Next, we have this sigma notation. 
So we plug in one for n, then we plug in two for n, three for n, and then we stop at four for n because four is on top. Since it's sigma notation, we're going to add all these together, and one plus two plus three plus four is equal to 10, and that's why this is at the 10 o'clock hour. Now for this thing, we're going to create a set. We're going to plug in zero for n, and then one, and then two, and three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then we stop when we get to 10 because the 10 on top. So this just created this set. Now what these bars mean is how many elements are in this set. We can count them up and see there are 11 elements in the set. So this is equal to 11, and that's why it's at the 11 o'clock hour. And last, we have this one right here. This means that this fraction divided by this fraction. And a nice way to divide fractions is to keep the first fraction, change the divide to a multiply, and flip the second fraction. And now we can simplify the fractions. 30 divided by 5 is 6, and 38 divided by 19 is 2. And 6 times 2 is equal to 12. And that's why this is at the 12 o'clock hour. How exciting.